All right, so this uh, this infection on the back of my neck, um, it's supposed to happen when there's a huge frequency shift like we had over July 4th weekend. And when there's a huge frequency shift, things are unstable and growth happens and you have to be able to release. And so the... The indicators that I was going to deal with some kind of infection um, that wasn't so bad when you think about it. It wasn't as bad as it was before last year. It was when I was seeing those two little orbs a couple of transmissions ago. And my refrigerator went haywire, pictures fell off my wall, and I'm feeling the frequencies. I didn't feel the heat at night even last night. And so... I definitely, you know, had to go through that major energy shift and I had the major ability to release. I had the ability to release like you wouldn't believe because you have to. I mean, I felt the pain um, this morning. It wasn't like bad, but it, I knew that my body was trying to push something out. And definitely after that happened, the pain was gone. I mean, there's still a residual, but not as bad as it was. And so that's what is paramount to understand in my world and why I do what I'm doing because we have had so much trauma done to us in our genetic line as children, as even adults. And those that trauma turns into scars, it turns into memories, it turns into cancer, disease, and chronic illness. It turns into damage that causes the cancer, Okay. And so you have to understand that treatment and a starvation against evolution paved the way for cancer and died suddenly. And so even more so, I'm going to add on to that. And that's a reminder to add on to the recap. Add on to recap. Is that also the, the disciplinary actions to the programming that was done to us um, in our genetic line ever since who knows when. The, the, discipline act, the discipline, disciplinary actions back way back when and even recently has caused and paved the way for cancer and died suddenly. And so also the treatments and starvation against evolution paved the way for cancer and died suddenly. If you're coming into the middle of my world and you choose to activate your immune system, you can't pick and choose what you want to treat while you are transitioning because you may not survive the treatments. That's the thing about this J world. Now it's like when you finally are, willing to face all your demons and the environment activate your, your demons and they're coming up and you got diagnosed. Um, maybe you do a little bit of JJ's, maybe you don't, and you will activate your system some more. And so you, if, if you decide to get major aggressive treatments, some people will not survive them based upon their predisposed issues. And it's so hard to say who's going to survive the treatments and who won't. And so when you think about what the answer is, the answer is food. And a release process that is not traumatizing and attacking the life in your body. That you are activating your immune system and you're opening up your system to release those demons, so to speak. Okay? And so do you really know how far gone you really are? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Some people are really too far gone. They know it and they can't even circulate my world because it would be too much. And I understand that. That's where I get the pushback. Okay, but if you know you can't do what I'm doing, then just go on your merry way and do your thing. But if you have, if you think you have the inkling to do what I'm doing, then you might have a chance and maybe you might listen some more. All right, but please don't slam me because you can't do it or think you can't do it. And so this is why you must understand your weight, understand your fears, understand your predisposed issues because you will have to face every single one of them. Because you have run away from them through the, me through the medical holistic energy healing world, okay? And so you see that I'm blowing my nose. This is what saved me again, blowing my nose and, of course, releasing the demons this morning. It was so aggressive this morning that I had to release the demons. It was because the body was trying to push out the thing that was causing me to feel, like, super stiff. I mean, I still feel a little bit in the back of my neck, but it's not as bad as it, was, as it wasn't as bad. I just have to keep eating and sleeping and releasing because, again, these energy shifts that's been going on has been very aggressive, like very aggressive. All right. So when it's time to pay the piper, do you have what it takes? That's the crux of the J world. Becoming whole is not an easy venture. That's my whole point is now people need to become whole again because they were born in deficit, born to do a job, born for human experimentation. 
and now the system doesn't need you anymore, really. So now do you need yourself and are you going to make yourself valuable to the system? And if you're just a consumer and is not willing to evolve and do better and better yourself, then you will be at the behest of the environment and at the behest of the medical holistic system who will treat you out of existence. Literally, they'll treat you until you're out of existence. And so it is worse when you're a child, okay, because you already came into this world at deficit. A mama only knows only take away the pain. In this environment, she has taken away your life. And that's literally what's going on. You see mamas out there. And I'm, this is where I'm going now. Now you're going to see now people who are mothers and who are not mothers or who don't have any children. You're going to watch your friends and family who are, who are mothers and who have kids who are probably not even listening to me because they're too oblivious, right? Or no one has introduced me to them. So you can watch them. Observe them like, like watching mice in a lab experiment. All right? Children don't have a choice. So when they die suddenly, they will always have someone to blame. But I guess if mama wants to survive, that absolution of blaming something might save her as she takes care of herself because she knows she can't save her children or anyone else for that matter because maybe her child is too far gone. And so at this point, only mama can save herself if she even knows how to. And so now you're seeing 19 year olds deal with conditions that the system will keep treating until that kid does not exist anymore at the hands of the parents. The parents keep begging for aggressive treatments but in the holistic world and in the medical world. Just watch your parents on Facebook. They brag and they beg for treatment and brag on how they've treated their children with holistic and allopathic remedies and surgeries. These parents brag about how many herbs they shove down their child's throats, how much elderberry syrup they give to their kids. They brag about the holistic professionals they have commissioned to treat and destroy their own family line. Okay, now you're going to see people also recommend holistic professionals and of the like to go and take away the body's ability to express. Now when you see things for what they really are, now you're like, holy shit, you can't go back once you actually see what things, how things have been done and what people have been trained to do against their own genes. Now you see the depopulation agenda at the hands of the parents and the grandparents. Just watch the grandparents. They are advising their children the same traditional ways. I mean, it's seriously extraordinary to watch because you can't penetrate them because you can't tell them how to raise their children. And so when you know this, you can see this, you can't go back. There is no fucking way when you finally see what's going on, you can't go back to the old world. You can't. Now you have to survive the knowledge of what's going on and you can't resist it because resistance is futile and it will destroy you. And when the parents finally do wake up, they can't even say this on Facebook because someone will call CPS because you are finally realizing what it takes to live. And you can't be the one to say it because you have kids. I can say it because I don't have any kids. So no one can call CPS on me because then what happens when you have kids and you're trying to change, you become leveraged when the ex or the in-laws or your grandparents or your parents or the grandparents or your friends and family don't like what you're doing because they don't want you to evolve and they don't want your kids to evolve because they're so tied in with the system. They will call CPS on you. They will call CPS and say that you're doing something like this or this or that to your child. And so that's why you can't really be boisterous or vocal about the J world when you have children because you know people out there are going to do that kind of shit to you. And so then you, now you have to know mom and dad that if you don't know what you're, what you're doing, go to a doctor. If you need to let your doctor know what's going on, what you're trying to do to get over your kid's allergy, you want their help, please do that. Don't try to do this on your own. But even though you might be integrating a medical professional to help you transition, even what you say on Facebook could make somebody think that you're doing something. And so at this point, just take care of yourself and your child and make sure you integrate a professional if you don't know what you're, don't know what you're doing. But this is why people are not very vocal about the J world, because they know people out there don't want people to evolve and they will use the authority on you as a way to leverage you. And so that's why you don't see a lot of people saying too much about J, even on Amazon. You'll see all my trolls talk shit about me, but you'll never see someone who really understands where I'm coming from say anything because they don't want to be leveraged or compromised or have someone mischaracterize what they're saying. And so J Jilly Juice and the Jilly Juice world is in a very unique position where it's really mostly under the radar and people will buy the book, but they won't say too much about it. And I understand. I get it now. So that's what keeps me motivated is that those that already understand, yeah, you know, preaching to the choir, but there's others that definitely need someone to 
give them more information so they can make an educated choice and decision and then also elicit the help of a professional and tell the professional what they want done and how they want it done and then help and ask them to help them make sure their child survives this environment without getting so much treatment, without getting so much oncology and antibiotics. And when the professional says that it's no big deal, it's a panic attack, don't think that they're lying to you because most likely that's what it is. People have mistaken the body's energetic processes reacting to a very aggressive environment as a heart attack but and a stroke, and it's not. It's not a heart attack and a stroke, okay? It's it's the fact that they have to deal with this energy and you can't go and treat all this energy all the time. But people people are begging to have things treated for their kid because they're not used to having their kid feel energy. And so you're going to see parents beg for treatment. They're going to beg for surgeries, beg for treatment, beg for things. When the professional says, we don't see any enzymes and they don't believe the fucking doctor. And so, but then they were never trained to deal with energy. They weren't trained to, to feed it. And so they go get a second opinion, a third opinion, until someone says, okay, I'll treat your kid. And now that kid's compromised, holding scars. That's the depopulation, depopulation agenda at the hands of the parents, the grandparents, the in-laws, everybody. And that's, that's why I don't want to be a kid in this society because I know what's going to happen as you're a kid and you're trying to evolve. Everybody and their mother will try to stop your evolution and beg to stop your evolution. That's the scary thing about parents nowadays. They will beg to destroy their own family line. It's crazy. Okay? But you know how aggressively tunneled these mommy and me groups are. You know these crunchy mamas will destroy you. They will. They did it to me. <laughs> they will do it to you if you give them the chance. They already have the enemy in mind. That's what the holistic people did to the people. They radicalized mothers against their own kids. That's the psychological operations. That's California and California spreading everywhere. That's the innovation. Just watch the mothers again who brag that they give their kids to give their kids gluten-free food. Just watch the mothers brag they starve their kids by only giving them organic. Just watch the mothers starve their children demonizing processed food. It's crazy to finally see what's going on. It is crazy to watch mothers starve their own children, their own family. And one of the major indicators of starvation, bone breakage. And so it's fucking crazy <laughs> at your own hand. And so again, let me reiterate, you will never know if people get where I'm coming from unless they know how to phrase statements. So the statements cannot be used against them by their friends, their family, their in-laws or outlaws, anyone that seems to want to leverage them because of their perception or their agenda with their with that child or they're just a savior that will save you and everyone else to death all right so you'll never know if people get where i'm coming from or not unless they know how to phrase their statements so those statements cannot be used against them what is it the j world if they can't speak about the j world in the context that i deliver it in they have not understood the world to the extent of phrasing things in the proper way activism. So what do they do if they can't say stuff about the J world in a way that's not going to hold them, it's not going to make them leverage by somebody else? They go right back to the activism. Or everything is wonderful, right? <laughs> will be their platform forever. And I said, you know, you don't have to talk about the J world to people you don't on your Facebook. But again, you know, what is evolution when you discover that there's a different way to do things? And you can phrase things in a way that's not going to be compromising to yourself and your family and everyone else. That you could say that I'm doing this and I'm also eliciting the help of my doctor who is helping my, me get over or help my kid get over an allergy. So that way they can't, they're not a sitting duck when they go out in the public and someone has nuts and someone has milk and they, they're able to get over that allergy and they're doing it incrementally. Right? There's ways that these grandparents and parents can phrase things to show that they're trying to evolve and help their kids become resilient in a very aggressive society full of food allergies and people destroying life through oncology and all the different herbs and extracts and algebraic syrup and detoxes. So it's a trippy dynamic. There is no specific measurable result. Even when you think people get it, you won't even know really because remember time. Time is the only truth to know if people understand you. People say they understand you now today, which I mean, I'm sure most some people understand where I'm coming from. Others don't. They say they do, but they don't. And then they don't survive another aggressive climate change. They, they die suddenly. Well, I thought they were in the J world. Doesn't mean they understood. 
Let me tell you, I wish I can get people to understand, but I'm not with them 24 seven. Even if I was, I couldn't help them figure out how to release the demons. They got to do it on their own. Okay, so just because someone's part of the J-World and they die suddenly doesn't mean that the J-World was not working. It just means that they had a perception of what the J-World was and they didn't want to feel pain. They were doing the cannabis and other shit, starving themselves. They didn't want to take a back seat to their social life. And so they did. They couldn't handle the environment. There's so many reasons why people pass away. But here's the thing. Why I'm on Facebook every single fucking day is to show you that I get, get through these infections and I'm able to release the demons. And get some relative peace. Not rest in peace, but relative peace. And I can still be coherent. I can still deliver what I need to deliver. I can hit my mark. And I can take on new information and evolve and even process and develop clarity of thought. And I'm not any different. Than, I'm not some god or guru. I'm not some, you know, anything special. I just have positioned my life and taken the time to understand the world that I live in. And I sleep when I need to. I eat when I need to. I do what I have to do to release the demons when I need to. Okay? I don't socialize out there. Okay? So, anyways. You, so you won't really know why people, what, what's going on until years later. All right? But then you're like, well, they could be under plastic surgery. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying. It could be like 40, 50 years before we really understand stuff. And so just enjoy the process and keep... Keep just speaking, and if you're in the J world, keep evolving your speech. Find ways to keep evolving the way you say things, because that shows evolution. It shows that you're willing to learn, right? That you can say things differently. And so time is the only truth to know if people understand you. I'm okay living in that type of world. It keeps me motivated. So I'll never know if people really get it. Even people say they get it, you never really know, so it's time, okay? <laughs> Ugh. I'm sorry, but that's what I have to do. All right. So then yesterday after, you know, I, I got off Facebook and all that stuff and, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to watch a movie, but I don't want to watch any of the stupid movies that are out there. So I want to watch, I, I still have to watch like all the way through the last Matrix Resurrections, but I, I watched it from the beginning and I fell asleep in the middle of it. And then I woke up at, at one point where it says, you know, we, we can't go back and we won't, you know, and then that last monologue in Resurrections. And so I was watching Matrix Revolutions, okay? And so and the Oracle is saying stuff. So change is a dangerous game, and that's what we're in right now. That's what I'm introducing is change. Um, I've been introducing change. I've always been evolutionary. I've always been the one to, to just evolve somebody or evolve things, and sometimes it was resisted, and I understand. And so when you think about the symbols, the characters in the movie of The Matrix, Neo is all of you. It's everybody one you are one and smith is like the everyman you can say smith is like the g-man like the government but really the government is you but smith is like the everyman okay and so the oracle the source that's what you felt when you touched those sentinels the sentinels were those little hydra looking things the machines that they were always trying to creep around and and those things would try to attack their ship and attack the people and you saw the little the hydra arms and they had the the, the swords at the end or knives at the end and he stabbed the person and so that's what you felt when you touched those sentinels the source but you weren't ready for it you should be dead but apparently you weren't ready for that either that's what the oracle is saying and so neo goes oh God. the architect told me that if i didn't return to the source zion would be destroyed by midnight tonight and the oracle goes please you and i may not be able to see beyond our own choices but that man can't see past any choice and then Neo or you goes, why not? He doesn't understand them. He can't. To him, they are variables in an equation. One at a time, each variable, one at a time, milk, meat, cheese, eggs, fruits, vegetables, water, air, chemtrails, you know, anything, right? One at a time, each var variable must be solved, then countered. That's his purpose, to balance the equation. And then I go, here's the example activism against food, water, air, government, politics, religion, and science. And so Neos, now you're seeing what's going on. As you see, everyone out there is going for and against something. That's the, that's the religion, that's politics, that's science. That's taking a, taking a stand one side or the other. That's biases, that's binary arguments. What she's talking about is binary arguments. And so Neo goes, what's your purpose? The Oracle goes, to unbalance it. 
as you're seeing and feeling the climate change. That's the instability. That's the unbalance. And you're seeing everyone screwing around and thinking that with, with their heads cut off, like chickens with their heads cut off. And so the oracle goes, what's, so Neil goes, what's your purpose? The oracle goes to unbalance it. And he goes, why? What, what do you want? And she goes, I want the same thing you want, Neo, and I'm willing to go as far as you, as you are to get it. And Neo goes, the end of the war, is it going to end? The Oracle goes, one way or another, can Zion be saved? The Oracle goes, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer to that question. But if there's an answer, there's only one place you're going to find it. And Neo goes, where? You know where, and if you can't find the answer, then, then I'm afraid there may be no tomorrow for any of us. What does that mean? Everything has a beginning, has an end. I see the end coming. I see the darkness spreading. I see death. And you are all about, you're all, and you are all that stands in the way. So that's the oracle saying that to Neo. And then Neo goes, Smith, very soon he's going to have the power to destroy this world. That's the every man, okay? So the oracle goes, very soon he, Smith is going to have the power to destroy this world. But I believe he won't stop there. He can't. He won't stop until there's nothing left at all. And so Neo goes, what is he? He is you, your opposite, your negative, the result of the equation trying to balance itself out. One way or another, Neo, this war is going to end. Tonight, the future of both worlds will be in your hands or in his. And change is a dangerous game. So you're seeing people will basically balance themselves out and either be an addition to the society and make it evolutionary and develop the change and do things differently, or they're going to treat themselves and resist themselves out of existence. And so when you see what's going on now with those little orbs, and then my feeling of infection in the back of my neck, and I'm looking at those little sentinels that are trying to penetrate that ship, and whenever they hear the, the, the good guys you know, running around in their world, you see all those little sentinels go and try to attack, looking like swarms of of orbs, swarms of viruses, swarms of hydra, swarms of insects. And so when you think about Zion, it's like an immune system. Once it gets breached, and it, they did breach me, and I, you're seeing me fight the fight. I'm blowing my nose. I'm resting. I'm eating. I'm, I'm doing what I have to do to, to survive this, releasing the demons. Once it gets breached, you must have the power to fight your battles and save yourself. So the sentinels in the, the matrix are the hydra. The machines will keep penetrating. And then one must use food to rebuild. Countering back is mutually assured destruction. M-A-D. It's madness when you think about it. All the remedies, energy healing, allopathic, holistic system, the health industry is a war you will not survive. Obviously because you're trying to resist something you can't fucking resist and you are resisting yourself out of existence. The source will always cause imbalance. How will you assimilate and rebuild at the same time? Getting caught up in the countering somebody else and resisting mutually assured destruction. So you don't want to get caught up. You have to assimilate, release the demons without attacking your body, mind, and spirit with herbs and extracts and detoxes and all that stuff, right? But that's the thing. You were born into that war of resistance. You're born into a war of always countering somebody else, whether you're pro-abortion or against abortion, where you're pro-life or you're against life, where you're pro-Trump or against Trump, where you're pro this or against this. It's like plus or minus, minus or plus, plus or minus. You're satanic or you're a savior. I mean, it, the, the, the binary arguments, the resistance is endless. That's what keeps people stuck. That's what keeps them in a loop of back and forth, back and forth, pro-salt or against salt. You, I mean, you can name, you say, oh yeah, pro mug or against mug. Anyone can develop an argument of for, for and against to cause people to be in locked in resistance and destruction. That's war. And I walked away from the war. I walked away from the activism and I don't even try to convert anyone. I don't care what the hell you do. I really don't. I want to give you the opportunity to figure out that you're in a fucking war that you can't get out of until you decide to get out of the war, that you know that you're in a war with your politics, your religion, and your science dogmas. And that's how I'm able to explain how religion has caused so much stuff that then bleeds over into the politics and then bleeds over into the sciences world. And then that's why the Catholic Church has the inversion. You're like, oh, the Catholic Church is satanic. No, it's not. They're just balancing out both sides. They're just aware of both sides. As you person think that you're like all good, but then you become evil to someone else by ramming your goodness down people's throats. 
That's religion is ramming your goodness, your self-righteousness down people's throats. And that's no different than the pro-Vs and the, and the anti-Vs. No different than the pro-GMO and the anti-GMO. You're ramming your goodness down people's throats. So then you become Satan to somebody else as they are becoming Satan to you. And it's a lot, it's a war that your kids will not survive, that you mom and dad will not survive. And neither will anyone in your community as you lock everyone into a war by forcing them to take a side. All right. And so I feel the painful, yesterday I was feeling the painful in, in my ear. I felt the painful frequencies in my ears just hovering between pain and release. Oh yeah, I felt, because <laughs> I've had ear infections. I did have the ear infections as a kid inside the ear after swimming sometimes. And yeah. And so, so who knows if I have to deal with some kind of ear, whatever. But I, I feel it every so often. Like yesterday I was feeling the, the frequencies. But it wasn't like I was feeling that I wasn't hearing the, any tone. It was just the painful. It was just painful, but not so painful. But I could see that it could have, if, if it wanted to go into that painful tone, it could have, but it just disappeared. All right. And so let me read this. Neo one equals you. Smith equals every man. Activism, I don't care what it is. Always keeping the balance by countering all the different variables and solving problems. This is what you guys have to understand. What, lo what love has been used as a weapon. So activism, I don't care what it is, always equals always keeping the balance by countering all the different variables and solving the problems. Somebody gave you the meaning of solution. Somebody gave you the meaning of problem. The world is not yours. It was built on somebody else's intentions and agenda and you were born a slave or you're born to slave. Okay. Some of you will pass away as a slave. Because you won't evolve and you won't take in new information and you will resist until you pass away and you'll take a side. I don't care what it is. That's the war of resistance and it's futile. That's all religions. That's all the science dogmas. That's all the politics. That's every single therapy in this world. I don't care what therapy it was, talk therapy or oncology or even bringing in the V's. It's it is a war of resistance, okay? And so that's every single therapy in the world. I mean every therapy. Therapy is resistance and it's futile and it's deadly. The world was built on resistance and always being at war with somebody or even yourself has developed this. So you think of Gollum and Smeagol in The Lord of the Rings. You saw him fighting himself just like Neo and Smith were like two separate entities that was really himself, the one, Okay, and then then they had Gollum, Gollum who was a Smeagol, was just the one, but he was his internal, his internal dialogue was him fighting himself. But then you got to see Smith and Neo fight each other as if they were in an immune system, battling it out, trying to discover. And then you hear Smith talk about what the intentions of the source. And then also the Oracle. And you see, so you see how these characters were either separated as separate entities telling you what's going on, or it was in one entity and you saw it like in the Lord of the Rings. Okay. And so solution equals problem, problem equals solution. When you live in those two worlds, you won't survive it. That's the trap. That's the war. You were born into a world of problem wars built on problematic solutions. So you think oncology is a solution? No, you end up dead anyways. You really think it saved your life? No, it's taken away your life systematically. You know what's going to save your life is eating food, resting, releasing the demons, having all of your social life take a back seat so you can give time to yourself. That's the solution for life. The oncology and the surgeries and the steroids and all the different injections are not saving anyone's life. Especially when the system can tell you how to open up your system. But the reason why they are life-saving therapies is because you have a closed system and they're not going to tell you how to open your system. Because they don't have the means to. They're selling you everything under the sun. They are commodifying everything about your body's energy coming in and out. You think the system is going to tell you how to open your system? No, it's not. It takes someone outside the system to tell you, hey, open your system up so you can release the demons. And then you can take on the food slowly if you're allergic and build yourself up to become a whole person. Because every time you go and get some kind of herbal remedy or detox or oncology, they are taking away large percentages of your longevity and your life. 
And so, um, and so, yeah, you're born into a world of problem wars built on problematic solutions and you don't win. You will never win. Love never wins in the end. And just look at your parents and grandparents. You love them to death. You were given the description of what love means. Love means take someone to the hospital. Love means take away their pain. Love means give them a remedy or antibiotic. You were given what the word love means. Love means take away food you think is poison away from your child. If it's FDA approved, it's not fucking poison. So what the hell, moms? How did you get so radicalized? Because you never understood evolution and someone made evolution mean like the food and everything else was poison and you made correlation equals causation. You didn't understand science or physics or chemistry because it was too expensive. And no one wanted to tell you anything different because they were selling you a, wor a herb, a, a, a detox, you know, a surgery. Which means that you won't survive the war, the war of love. Now you'll watch people love, the ch love their children to death. That's why it's so hard to be in the mainstream. Love means taking away people's suffering at whatever cost, at the cost of everyone else's lives. Now you see why most people will not live through these wars. They are, too, they are too invested into proving to everyone how much they love everyone, even their children. That's why I don't want your love. Your love is destructive. I respect my husband as much as he perceives what love is, but I do not want to destroy my husband. So I respect him more than I love him. Yes, I do love him so he can evolve and live, but I do not love him to death. If he chooses to love himself to death, he will make personal requests that will have a predictable outcome. If he wants to go to the doctor, I'm not going to say, no, you're not going to go to the doctor. I'm not going to deny any kind of anything that he wants. He can have whatever the hell he wants. If he chooses that, that's his choice. But I'm not going to encourage him to get oncology. I'm not going to encourage him to take any medicines. I'm not going to encourage him to always go see somebody to get diagnosed. He will have to encourage himself or people around him who are in those worlds will encourage him and I can't stop it. I don't love it, but I can't stop him from listening to other people. He has, he's a grown man. He makes his own choices. So I will not discourage, I will not encourage any type of destruction to his body, mind, or spirit. I will feed his fucking ass. I will feed him. I will tell him to take a rest. I will tell him to stay home and take a nap. I will tell him if, you know, and if he doesn't want to, then fine. But I will encourage him to take care of himself. That's my role as a wife to make sure that that we don't go downhill financially and to make sure that he takes he knows when to take a rest. Sometimes he won't. And that okay. Alright, so revolution, when you think about matrix revolutions, revolution means one side wins in one war, then another war, the other side wins. That's voting. That's all the wars that are out there. It's always back and forth. This side wins and this side wins. And this, that's the war, that's the war of depopulation. Just like the voting system. Every eight years in America, it's a loop. It's a trap. Nobody wins and nobody loses. It's a trap. That's revolution. It's circular reasoning. A circular argument or circular reasoning is an argument that comes back to its beginning without ever proving anything. So an argument consists of one or more statements, premise, and claim conclusion. A premise is any reason or evidence that supports the argument's conclusion. So yeah, you could say you can develop any meaning against something. You could say, if this happens, then this will happen. If you do this, then this will happen. If you say this, then this is what this means. That's circular arguments. It goes right back to the beginning and you haven't proven anything except that the end result is death. So when you're all like, oh, I'm an activist and chemtrails are poison and bees are poison, and you believe you should die anyways, and you're against all the chemtrails and all the V's that are poison, supposed to be like deadly, but you believe in death anyways, then that's a circular reasoning. That's a circular argument because the actual outcome is your intention anyways. So what the fuck are you resisting? What are you an activist against if you already believe you should die anyways? Right? That's the arguments in the activism world. That's why I got out of it because it was pointless. They were ar these activists against GMO taking food away from their kids and their kids are their kids bones are breaking and and that they don't even see that as an indicator that they're starving their child they're into the circular reasoning they're writing legislation for what they're trying to go and sue big pharma or sue these 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 lab companies making lab created meat and cell created meat oh god it's poison it's this you're trying to destroy us I got out of those worlds a fear of food, fear I'm done with it.
And so Matrix Resurrections was actually his fight to keep taking the blue pill. And so they actually brought in the 1960s music, which is really, and of course it took place in the Bay Area, of course, right? <laughs> They're trying to tell you something that, which I already knew, right? And so his fight to keep taking the blue pill, that's in Resurrections. 9-11 was a glitch in the Matrix. What do you mean by a glitch? Well, you know. And so what is a glitch? A sudden, usually temporary malfunction of irregularity or equipment. A draft version was lost in computer glitch. Suffer a sudden malfunction or irregularity. Her job involves troubleshooting when systems glitch. Situations when are free, which are frequently called computer glitches are incorrectly written software, software bugs, incorrect instructions given by the operator, operator errors as a failure to account for this possibility might also be considered a software bug, undetected invalid input data, okay, and everything is all relative to what is correct versus incorrect. And it's all relative to the perspective, right? The beauty is in the Baha'i of the beholder. And so cures equals resistance. And resistance is futile. And so doc bots, doc bots, this was said in the Matrix Resurrections, gives you a crappy odds for surviving. And so are holo doc bots, like the holistic world. And so the Matrix, right, when you think about it, weaponizes every dream, everything that's important to us. Now you're in a purge. So now you're seeing... That having a child is going to be weaponized against you because now you're going to try to treat this child and the child's not going to survive the treatments because they're in a higher aggressive environment and they're also in deficit. And so everything, marriage, having children, all the socializing, all the drinking, the drugs, everything that's ever important to you uh, and every dream of having a career and having, you know, uh, I don't know, fame and fortune and all that stuff, it's going to be weaponized against you. It's going to be to your death. When you're chasing after those kind of traditions, it will be weaponized against you. And you're in a purge right now. And so, yeah, there will be a peace after the purge, but not rest in peace for the collective. Some individuals will be rest in peace, but not the collective. And so this is when I woke up from my nap because I, I watched the beginning of the Matrix as he was going through that process and I fell asleep somewhere in the middle. Jeez. And so I broke up where it says, we can't go back, we won't. And so they jumped off the building. And so the end of the Matrix Resurrections was people don't like freedom. They need someone to control them. They like the certainty. Nothing will really change, but you humans get a second chance. The ones that finally can evolve, they will get a second chance at life if they can deal with their predisposed issues. Some won't. Some will die in, in the one life they were given. And so I had a proposition yesterday. Why don't we stop calling people satanic? Because they could be assuming that you are satanic relative to your belief system. This is my argument to support the thesis above. According to many people, it seems Satan is a person who believes something that is inverted to their perspective. Just because they think that their perspective is the right way. So I saw a chemtrail activist share somebody's meme about Satanism, that about inversion. But if you came from a world where you're attacking your evolution and attacking your um, growth and attacking your potential uh, longevity, then when someone says, okay, here, we're going to give you uh, a, a food, we're going to, we're going to change the food. So it's not, so it's cruel free. We're going to make you now feel the release of the demons. And now, you, but they don't tell you that you need to feed yourself to help. And you have to feel the pain of all that stuff. Then anyone bringing on the pain and causing you to evolve, well, then you think is satanic. Okay. And so inversion is all relative to perspective. Even those who are not inverted are satanic. If they are, if they were you, if they were used to that argument that those who are inverted to their perspective. <laughs> okay. And so it's all relative. Um, if, I mean, because when the shoes on the other foot, the people looking at them will think their perspective is inverted. Therefore satanic. So everybody, that has that comes from a different point of view will think the other person is satanic. So you see two can play that game. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's correct by natural law. What if everyone in the old world was satanic because they were against they went against the natural order of things by using cures and believed every everyone should die someday. So remember cures equal resistance. When you try to cure your body you're trying to resist the body's evolving. And resistance is futile because then you have breakthrough infection. And so now the system wants to correct the intentions and use natural law as the laws of life, not go by man-made law by saying that oncology is giving you life. No, it's fucking not. It's taking away your life. And they're not telling you you should, you should feed and release. And so 
if you're in a closed system and you don't get oncology, then yeah, you could die because you have a closed system and your body is, is not able to release the demons. And so what's the only thing the system can do in a closed system is either do oncology if you can survive the treatment. That's the fucked up situation people are in. And so um, that's the kicker. That's the binary arguments of religion, that resistance, that's resistance. That's the death culture. And so, yeah, now the system wants to correct the intentions and use natural law as the laws of life, not go by man-made law by saying oncology is life. No, it's not. It destroys it. And so here's the thing. If you, even if you do believe people should die and destroy life and justify it, I would never call you satanic. It's not my place to judge anyone. If I were to provide an argument around where the J-world fits into the, what someone would construe as satanic, we would barely fit the mold, if at all. We don't. I, I, we don't attack life. We don't. Ironic, isn't it? Guess, just, guess it's just a percentage of Satanism, Satanism do you practice. And then at what point does it become fully on satanic? I mean, right now, my evolution of releasing demons really isn't satanic when you think about it. I don't attack. I do not use any machines against anything. I don't even surgically disfigure myself. I do not use herbs against my life and my body. I do not use alchemy to cast a spell on anything on my body or in my body. So yeah, the j roll would not be technically satanic at, at all. And I have feral cats to keep the mice population down. And so I really don't want to destroy mice in my house. They have not been a problem lately because I think we have the feral cats around here. And so I know there's a few, but they keep out of sight. I'm just glad the wild cats are around the house. And so, let me just see. Okay, I'm almost done. And so, um, so here's the thing about college. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, college is great. I think if you go to college, get the basics done. Get the writing done. Get your math and try to go as far as you can with math. I mean, I don't know how far you want to go because you can get so technically far that it could just cloud the bigger picture if you're, if you've been born to be that detailed. Um, but it's good to have used both sides of the brain and exercise both sides of the brain and you got to figure out what you want to go into and really check out what you're going into because you could be part of a depopulation agenda, not only destroying yourself, but also your fellow, your fellow man. All right. And so, um, so what is college in a nutshell? You go to business school and learn how to screw people over. So there's like Wharton College. There's like, you know, even Harvard and Yale. You go to business school and you learn all the aspects of business. You figure out how to legally fuck somebody over if they're not aware. And so then, or then you get a law degree, consulting for both sides. So you can find the loopholes and help people screw people over or you can be part of the government and put them away. The FBI, CIA, forensic, you know, financial forensic investigators, um, going on the dark web and all that stuff, right? So that's America. And then you have religion to justify it. You have all religion to justify screwing people over, <laughs> making so much money at the expense of everyone in your community. And then you have politics so you can convince people how great it is. Obviously, obviously you see all the politicians going, hey, vote for me. I'll give you all the money back, everything that was taken from you for social programs, right? <laughs> you see the split between Democrat and Republican. And then you have the sciences to program people. Yeah, program to be sexual, program them to be analytical, program them to be, oh uh, gosh, predatory, program them to be so many ways to fit that specific mold that is required in our society. Program them to be Stafford wives, to be an influencer. All right, so that's, that's America. But there are upsides to academia. But the cynic in me sees through all the bullshit, okay? And so I'm programming myself. Now, here's the thing about pain. And this is one of the things I'm going to write about in one of my chapters. It is about pain, okay? Um, external pain and external internal pleasure is a motivator for somebody else's intentions. This is why corporal punishment is now being outlawed because the damage is done, damage it does over time. And it turns into cancers as well as other behavioral issues in that child who eventually will grow up to be someone who is dealing with the scars. All right. As you know, pleasure seekers also run the risk of becoming addicts chasing pleasure. However, 
The internal pain is the motivator for the individual to push out the demons from somebody else's intentions above. So when we are dealing with so much of our predisposed issues, there was so much internal pain from the wars that we came from, whatever was in our genetic line from our parents and grandparents and great grandparents, and whatever somebody else has done to us as children and even adults. Okay. And so then you have this internal pain of so many memories and so many things that you have to push out and deal with and then replace with whole cells, with whole cells that are not traumatized. That's becoming whole again. And so the internal pain is a motivator for the individual to push out the demons from somebody else's intentions that were done above. Why do you think the world is in so much pain right now? Generations of scars and corporal punishment and the world has, afflict, has afflicted the offspring. Who keeps making the same mistakes? So how do you control out of control children? Therein lies a problem. No matter what, in this day and age, children will either be predators or prey. Prey to what? Sometimes they're prey to other people who are predatory. Sometimes it's just the environment they are prey to. The environment, they can't handle the environment. They get heart attacks and strokes and they don't survive them. But many will not be resilient because many, most people don't even know what it means to be resilient even as an adult. So you then, so you hope your, your adult child can turn their own life around because mama can't turn her life around and her kid's life around at the same time. She can only show the child how to do it if the child survives. Assuming the child will survive their years of living as a minor. And you hope the programming that was set as a minor doesn't stay, just stay put. You hope the kid was the has the chance to evolve, assuming they have enough substance to evolve. If they don't have enough substance to evolve, most likely they will not, it will not happen. Okay. And so in this, as in this aggressive environment, you just hope that these kids that are skinny and these kids that have food issues can finally turn that shit around and take on the food and nutrients so they can survive these aggressive climate changes. But I mean, that, that's the thing. 18 years of programming, if, assuming that kid stays under the house for 18 years. Okay. And so, I mean, you just hope that these kids survive all this. But I will say that that's the reason why there is cancer disease and chronic illness and autoimmune disorders. Because external pain and external internal pleasure was the motivator for somebody else's intentions. And you know, pleasure could be sex and pleasure could be drugs and all of that stuff. And so... Yeah, I mean, we're the world's a mess. It really is. And that's why they're doing a great reset. At some point, there might be a childless society. Is that going to be a generation gap? Well, believe me, biotech will make sure that the human race will still keep going. But we really must control now what people are reproducing in our society. And you're going to see the kind of kids and adults that were reproduced from deficits, from trauma, major trauma. But even when you have trauma to the body, mind, and spirit, does it make you resilient if you can become whole again? If you can face that trauma and become whole again? That's the thing, is that the government can't force people to face their demons. You can't force someone to face anything. And if they choose to stuff all those feelings and things down and try to use herbs and extracts and operations to cause more of the trauma and stop the body from releasing well then they will also it'll also metastasize and turn something crazier later on but then the government has to watch for that too the government has a huge huge responsibility to make sure the human race doesn't extinct itself and that that person who doesn't want to face their demons are not going to become deadly later on but again you can't force anyone to face their demons that's why the j world is so unique because we're facing our demons personally but we can't force people to do it but, we can, but I can only point out now the patterns in our society and why we are in the place we're in, why we are where we are. And shit needs to change. And so that's all I'm going to say, but I'm going to make a note of some of this stuff. But um, yeah, cures equals resistance. Resistance equals is futile. And that's what's built into politics, religion, and science, and the health and wellness world, and the medical holistic system. When you are resisting evolution, you will not survive. So you want to survive, stop fucking resisting. But people are so far gone, that's the only thing they can do, is resist themselves out of existence. And so watch what your friends and family are doing. Watch what grandmas are doing with their children and their grandchildren. 
they will repeat the same mistakes and you hope these kids survive. You hope these grandkids survive. But we'll see. All right. Bye.